Hi guys, so in the last tutorial that uh, we looked at, we had uh, used Excel to do the calculations of the mean, the standard deviation, and even got it to calculate the one half uh, of the standard deviation for our significance test. So now this tutorial is going to be to help you make a bar graph that shows those error bars so that a reader of your poster can quickly assess if there are significant differences between your control and your experimental group. Now, uh, Excel likes to do a lot of things automatic for people. In this case, we can't let, cannot let it make an automatic graph for us, so we have to be very careful. So you want to make sure you don't highlight any of this data. And the, the real problem here is that the way the data is set is that we have all of the control group, both radical and shoot here uh, together, and then the uh, experimental group for radical and shoot. If we wanted to graph the radical uh, and let Excel do things for us automatically, then we would need the two columns for radical together. Uh, and we're just not going to do that. Okay, so how do we get around that? Just it's a couple of extra steps and it's no big deal. So what we, what we need to do is make sure you're not highlighted in any of the data because if you do that and you go here to insert your graph, Excel is going to think you want to graph all of this data in here and it's going to put your graph together automatically. You're going to be like, what? How do I get what I really want graph? So don't do that. So what you're going to do is come out to where there's empty empty cells out here. Go ahead and highlight out there, and that way Excel is going to be like, I don't know what to graph. Uh, and there, now you select the graph you want. So here you're going to go, uh, where you go to insert, to make the graph is on the insert. And again, make sure you're highlighted on the cell off to the side, away from the data, and then go click on bar graph. And there's a menu of bar graphs. Just click on the first one for a simple bar graph. And you can see it's put a graph out in the middle, uh, and it's blank because we haven't told it any data yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that off to the side so we can see our data. We want to graph our means, okay? And you'll notice that as long as the chart area is highlighted, you have a couple of uh, other menu options here at the top, chart design and format, okay? If I go and I click on any other cell, those two menu options disappear. So uh, it's happened to me before, I forget what I'm doing, and, I, and I'm like, where did that option go? If I'm trying to make a graph and then, and then work on that graph, always highlight it, and it'll give you some menu options that are appropriate for it. So now you see chart design and format. If you go to format, it gives you formatting options, but here we still need to design our, our graph. And here's where we're gonna tell it what data to graph. So when you're clicked on the chart design, you're gonna go to where it says select data, because we have to select data to, to graph. So we're going to click on that, and here's where it gives us this dialog box. It's going to help us select the data we want. So we're going to go ahead and graph the radical data first. So that means we're going to need to go to the second column here, um, and then third, fourth, and then the sixth column here, because that's where the radical links are for the controlled experimental. So what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a series, and we're going to title it. Since we're doing radical, we're going to go ahead and type in the word radical and then length, okay? And then we're gonna need to tell what data to graph. You can see now that Excel's are already trying to graph something and they just graphed uh, a generic bar up to, the, up to a value of one, and that's fine. It'll change once we do that. Now, down here it says, in that dialog box, it says series values. Here's where we're gonna tell it what values to graph, and we're gonna graph the means, okay? so. Don't click in the white area here. Instead, click here in this button here where it says, let's select the data. So I'm gonna click on that little up arrow right there. And it is at this point that I'm gonna go and select the mean for the radical length of the control. So I'm gonna go and click right on that cell there. And you can see it's highlighted, okay? Now, if the other radical column was right near this uh, column here, we can just drag and highlight both boxes, but they're not. So what do we need to do? We need to have this first box highlighted that we see highlighted there for the mean. And we're gonna need the mean uh, radical length for the control group. So we also need to highlight the mean for that one. And the way to do that is to keep this first box highlighted, you're gonna press on the control key. Do this before you click on anything else. Don't hit anything else. Hit the control key first and then move your cursor right over the, the cell you wanna highlight, in this case, the radical mean for the experimental, and highlight it, and now both of those are highlighted, okay? Now, when I return back to the dialog box, you can already see the second bar up here, click OK, and there you go. 
Now we've graphed the means for both the control. For the control, it was 27.1. It's graphed up there. And for, it, this is my data set, by the way. I actually ran an experiment testing uh, the effect of one plant on another. And the, the radical length for the other one was 3.9. So they're graphed there. Okay. Now at this point here, um, we are, we still need to make some, uh, some uh, work with some titles and so on. Like down here, we want to change the one and the two uh, so that it says control and experimental. We can do that here in a little bit. However, we can do two separate graphs. You can do one for radical and you can do a separate graph for a shoot length. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the shoot length as well. So what we're going to do in the same dialog box before we move on is we're going to click add. And we're going to add a second series. You've already seen the orange, beer, orange bars appeared. Okay. If you don't like those colors, you can change the formatting later. But for now, let's go ahead and type in a shoot length. And then we're going to have to go and select now the shoot lengths. Now the shoot lengths are the second column for your for your control and for your experimental. So just like before, don't click in the white area. I just did that and it messed stuff up earlier when I was practicing. You're going to come over here to where there's this uh, up button here, this up arrow, which is going to allow you to select. So now we're going to go to the mean again, except we're going to go to the mean under the shoot column. And I'm going to select that one. I don't need to hit control yet. Now I need to go and select this other cell under the experimental group, but I need to hit the control key first. So I hit the control and then click on it, and both of those are highlighted. And once I've done that, the bar should appear for those values. Okay. Now, I do need to change the bottom where it says 1 and 2 so that the bottom says control because the first two bars are for the control data. Uh, the means and the number two uh, area there is for the experimental. Okay, so here it says we can edit and then it says access label range. That means that I can go and select somewhere on this spreadsheet where the actual labels are and I haven't typed anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this dialog box and I'm going to come up here just to any two squares that you can be anywhere you want. You can be here and here or anywhere. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it down here. So I'm going to type the word control okay, in one box, and then in the box right next to it, I'm going to put exper uh, experimental. Okay. And now I'm going to come back over here again. I'm going to highlight on the graph again, and I'm going to come up to chart design. Okay. And I'm going to go right back to that data uh, dialog box. So I'm going to click on that, data, select data. And I'm going to come up here on the right side here and click edit. And it says access label range. So here I'm going to click on that, uh, that, arrow, that little arrow button that tells me to go and select my range. And here I'm just going to click on here and drag. And I've selected those two. Since those two cells are right by each other, I just dragged those two. And now I'm going to click OK. And you can see that the bottom of my uh, graph over here, it's changed to say control and experimental. Okay, and then you can click OK. Now, you could be more specific. You could, let's say you're doing uh, a pH uh, treatment, right? Or you're doing salt, right? So you could say uh, you can rewrite salt treatment instead and be more specific. And when you do, you can see that it changed there on the bottom there. Or just say experimental, and then in the text of your poster, you tell what the experimental treatment was, right? And so there it is. That's your graph. It's labeled. And now we need to add some error bars. But before we do, let's go ahead and change uh, the graph. This will make things easier in the long run so that it has um, uh, uh, it has an uh, uh, access titles because there's no access titles right now. And uh, so that it has a legend. So uh, I'm going to go all the way out here where it says quick layout. And I'm going to pick a layout that has... Uh, that has titles, and that's this one right here. You can tell it to do these things one by one, uh, and sometimes they have the right one. You want to pick one that has both the legend and it has the access titles here. Right? So right here where it says uh, access title here, I click on there, I highlight, and I'm going to type in length, because these are lengths, 
and I'm going to put the units. Always indicate the units on your axis. When I hit enter, you can see it changed to length in millimeters. Down here on the bottom, I'm going to highlight there, and I'm going to write the word group. And so you have your control group and your experimental group, and then there's your legend. Okay, so here's your basic bar graph. However, uh, since we don't know the true means, you need to have some error bars that give you an idea of where we think the mean more or less might be uh, within a certain range, and that's the idea behind the uh, error bars and doing the um, the uh, uh, the significance test using those uh, error bars. Okay, so now what we want to do, and if you wanted to, you can go to a fancier uh, little uh, background like this. I kind of like that one, to be honest with you, uh, or you don't have to for now. Now we need to add the error bars, and, and earlier in the tutorial, I had you calculate the high and the low value for those error bars, okay? And that's fine, you can see them there, but stay away from those in these steps here for, for making the error bars, okay? In these steps, we're going to use the actual, just the value for one half standard deviation, which is half that uh, standard deviation calculation, okay? So for radical length, it's 6.6 .6 for the control, okay? Move my chart off here, the side here, and for uh, the radical length for the experimental group, my half standard deviation is 1.0. Okay, so I'm going to use those two values to tell Excel to give me those errors, uh, the error bars. Again, use the one half standard deviation in this step. So when I come out here to this uh, graph right here, when I highlight on it. And I, and I just pick on it there, it's going to give me some options here. And right here it says add. Okay. Now we've already added legends, we've already added the axis title, but what we need to do is add the error bars. So there's an option there for error bars. And be careful because right now that I'm just picking on it, it's going to just pick some error bars for me. right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to this little point out here, and I'm going to pick on that, and it gives me some options. It says standard error, percentage, standard deviation. You're going to stay away from those because we didn't tell Excel, we didn't set up our data right to use these uh, options. In fact, I don't even know how to use them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to more options, and we're going to click on that. Okay? And now it's giving me a little dialog box, and it says radical length and shoot length. So we're just going to do this for radical length, and then we can come back and then do it for shoot length. So I'm going to go ahead and do radical length, which is the blue bar. And I click on there, and it gives me, it's already put some error bars on there, and the error bars are the same size in both, but they're not in the real data that we have here. So what we got to do is we're going to go, there's options down here just for the error amount. Here's giving a value of five uh, percentage points above and below or, or something like that. Uh, it's got percentage, standard deviation. Here it says standard error. What you're going to do is you're going to go to custom, okay? And you're going to click on specify values. And here's where we're going to go in and put in the one half standard deviation for the positive and for the negative error. So that dialog box has come up there. And you're going to use your control key again to highlight the one half standard deviation for both for the radical for the control and for the experimental values. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead to that button there that allows me to go pick cells. And we're going to do, we're doing for the positive value. So we have to do the same thing exactly for the negative one. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to go to the one half standard deviation row there. And for the control, it's 6.6. .6, and this is millimeters. And I'm going to click on there to highlight it. Now press the control key and go to the one half standard deviation under the, uh, for the experimental group under the radical column. And you can see both of those are highlighted. Okay. All right, so we've done that for the positive values. Now you're going to go back again, and remember, just click on this button. Don't click anywhere else in this error uh, box here. Click on there, and you're going to go select the same two values again. It's a repeat of what we just did. So I'm going to go and I'm going to collect the 6.6. You're .6. telling Excel, do this for the first blue bar, and then you're telling it, do this for the second blue bar. For the second blue bar, again, Control, and hit the 1 again. And then when we hit OK, go back and look at our graph there. You can see it's automatically done the error bar for the first one. It went ahead and added uh, 6.0 points above and 6.0 points below to give me that error bar. And for the experimental uh, radical length, it went plus one above and plus one below. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing 
for the orange bar. And I'm going to do it without talking to show you how much faster you can go without me having to explain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click there uh, on the orange ones. I'm going to highlight the orange ones instead of the blue ones. I'm going to click on there. And I'm going to go to the error bars again. More options. Okay. And this time, this is for, it's already, since I've highlighted for the uh, uh, experimental group, or, I mean, for the shoot length, uh, and we're going to go through the same steps. So I'm going to go through them without uh, saying much. I'm going to go to custom, specify here. I'm going to go to the positive values. Make sure you're doing the shoot length now again. Control and select half standard deviation for the shoot. And then you're going to do the same thing for the other one, but for the negative. Control. And the error bar is now based on the one half standard deviation. Now, just looking real quick, if, if you use this chart to compare first the radical, was there an effect on radical? I can see that the error bar for the experimental, the top part of the error bar is way down here and does not overlap with the lower part of this uh, error bar. So that tells me that this mean is significantly lower than the control mean. So that means whatever I treated uh, the seedlings with, it caused the plant to grow much slower. So there was a significant effect. The same is true in this data for the shoot length. You can see that the top of this error bar here for the experimental does not overlap. It's not within the range of this error bar here. So that means this mean the shoot length is significantly lower for my experimental than this one here. Now, once you're done there, you're ready to go ahead and put it on your poster. Uh, and I sent everybody a link earlier with posters that you can download. You pick your own poster. Uh, and there was a 48 by 36 inch one and there was a 36 by 24. Uh, and I gave uh, some information on what to make the hypothesize. So I picked this one here. And what I want to do is, uh, this is all space that you can uh, type uh, the information you need to, because you're going to need to type your methods and so on. And what I can do is I can actually make that box smaller, which would be a wise thing to do. And now I can paste my chart in the area I want to. I can even do that for this one here. And what I'm going to do before that here, uh, I'll give more on the formatting later. Uh, but let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet here. It is because my back background is uh, is different. I might go back here to uh, the chart here, and I might pick something like this here, where there's some uh, chart styles, uh, and then work with that. Right. So let's say I did that. Now all I got to do is Control C, and because they're both Microsoft, there's a link to this data set. So any change I make on the spreadsheet would be made once I paste it over here. So I go back to that poster and I just uh, paste it. You can go to the paste right here or control V allows you to paste it in there. And it came out pretty small, so you can change the size if you want. I can change it to match a certain dimension. And the font size is way too small. The font size for the body is supposed to be 24 and it should match. So the font size here is some weird thing. It's not, it's called Quanto Central Sans or something. So I'm going to try to pick that same one for this one, uh, Quantacento Sans. And then it's still too small a font. It's at font size 10. I'm going to make that 24. And so now the font size is bigger overall. Okay. Now you're going to have to add a caption, and I'll, I'll do a tutorial to show you how to do that later. But you can see now what this looks like. Uh, and you've put your graph on there. Okay. And uh, then the rest of you, you're going to have to change the text and all that on there. So I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.